everybody, and welcome back to a very special podcast. This is the podcast which you talk about all of your favorite TV series from yesteryear, and then discuss them over a glass of wine. I'm Patrick M. Dunn. Perhaps you know me from the previous 100 plus episodes, and I'm joined here always by Kat Halstead, the author! Hello, everybody! Wow, that sounded really strange. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, we're in like our second of uh, TGIF episodes. Uh, we're just yes. kind of blasting through the old TGIF hits. I'm very, very excited, I have to say. Yes, we are diving into the shows of our youth, the shows that we love, the shows that shaped who we are. Yes, uh, I, I would have to say I am who I am because of the show we're doing tonight. I'm probably not, but I just feel like saying that. Same. <laughs> uh, so, so what are we doing tonight? In case you haven't read the uh, the title of the episode, in case you're blind, maybe I don't know. Or maybe you just you're just letting iTunes autoplay it or whatever, or Apple Pod, whatever the hell it's called. Yeah, your your podcast aggregator. Yeah, sometimes yeah, sometimes it plays the next app. And we're you- doing the hit sitcom from the '80s and '90s about two misfits who are somehow related. And they have to try and figure out how to get along. We are doing Perfect Strangers. Yes. Shout out to Perfect Strangers. Uh, I This was, I watch this all the time. And it's weird because I haven't seen it since probably like 95 or something. Uh-huh. And all these memories came flooding back to me when I was watching this episode. I was like, oh my God, I forgot about Jennifer and Marianne. Is that her name? Marianne? Yeah. I, I forgot their names. And I remembered... Um, what is uh cousin Larry worked at a newspaper and I remember his boss and all the other coworkers. Yes, he works at the Chicago Chronicle, I believe. Yes, and then the theme song came flooding back to me, and then like weird Balky just being weird. Oh, the theme song. Can we talk like this theme song is probably one of my top ten theme songs. It is very comforting. It's very it's very eighties, very soothing, I would have um, to say. Um for me, I would say I would put this as a more comforting theme song than Full House. Yes, I can see that. It would probably be right behind Cheers for me. Uh, Cheers is definitely the top, I think. Cheers is just kind of that... Yeah, <clears throat> I think for me it's Cheers, Golden Girls, Perfect Strangers. Ooh, okay, I can be... I, I might put Growing Pains before Perfect Strangers. And, oh, The Facts of Life. Mm. The Facts of Life before um, Perfect Strangers too. But so. Those are basically the top five yeah, for sure. For sure. We, we finally agree on something. Depending on your mood that day, they could... Get moved around. Uh, girl, we finally agreed on something. Woo! Maybe. Shocking. I'm not arguing with you and calling you trash because you said Perfect Strangers was the third. <laughs> I know, <of> right? <laughs> We're not calling each other trash or anything. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, just very, I felt like I was coming home when I was watching this. It was just, I, this show was on when we were in like kindergarten. And I remember watching this. This is very, very old. Yeah. Like, I, when I was a real young child, like, I just mostly liked watching shows with like kids or teens or like families. But this was just weird to me because I, it had adults and just doing like in adult situations. But they were very like cartoony <laughs> though too. So I think maybe that's what drew me to it. I remember watching this because I totally watched. This is like a show that I was allowed to watch. I think it might have actually been at the time like my favorite show. If someone said what is Katie's favorite show, my mom probably might have said either He Man or Shira or Perfect Strangers. <laughs> just two wildly different um, <laughs> yes. right there <laughs> i oh i have to say all right so speaking of sheer i know we did the he and she episode like five or six episodes back i'll listen to it it's episode 100 uh i started watching the um she is on i think it's on hulu right it's on hulu um netflix netflix it's, i knew it was on one of those so i started watching the first few episodes because it's that he man she like extended movie secret that they- of the sword it is really good. It's so much better than the Christmas special that we did. It is. I definitely preferred She-Ra to He-Man. I, I, She-Ra was just a more fun show, I think, and much more, had more depth, I think, than He-Man. Yeah, I mean, I was definitely running around going, I am She-Ra all around my backyard. <laughs> me too, girl. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, let me bust out the picture. I'm going to, I'll put it on um, the Twitter. I had a Princess of Power lunchbox and there's a picture of me on like the first day, oh. first grade. And I am loud and proud. I had a yellow Princess of Power lunchbox. And every now and then I throw it up on Instagram or something. And that, the comments are great. I love it. So I'll put it, definitely put it on. I the had, po- <laughs> uh, for my lunchbox, I had a hot pink Barbie and the Rockers lunchbox. Ooh, Barbie and the Rockers. And then we got told, like, we couldn't have plastic lunchboxes. What? 
conspiracy corner. We had to have like paper bags or something. Because people would like hit each other or something. I don't know. It was stupid. Oh, I could totally see that. Ha- Those thermoses were fucking diesel as fuck too. Yeah. You could probably, you fill that up with something. You could probably throw it at them. Give them a concussion maybe. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Wild stuff. Wild stuff. Uh, I had a, I was also a brony too when I was young. Oh, my little ponies. Yes. I, my little ponies was my thing. I might still have a couple. I'll find out when I go through all my stuff in storage. Wild stuff. Did you have any bush willies? No. Those were like the um, were furry things that were friends with um, the ponies. Yeah. You know what I had? I had glowworms. I had the little glowworm figures. Oh, yeah. Not right. the big one, but I had like the little ones that actually like glue in the dark. Oh, yeah. I still, I know for a fact I still have one. I don't know if it still glows in the dark. Ooh. I'm sure the battery died. You could probably replace it. There was no battery. It was just like the... Um, Plastic is that glow in the dark that absorbs the light. Magic. <laughs> when I get stuff out of storage, I'll show you. Uh, stay tuned, folks. Stay tuned for Cat's um like Storage Wars episode. Storage Wars. <laughs> All this random eighties crap that Cat still has. All right. So um, what episode of of um, I almost said Family Matters. What episode of Perfect Strangers did we do tonight? We did um episode from season five, episode thirteen, because they're cousins. Yes, and their cousins. Uh, what, night, what, what night was this on? <laughs> I don't remember. It was on a Friday night. I got that's it. all I know. I got it. All right. It's on January 5th. Okay. We're in the midst of winter. It's cold. 1990. 1990, which just seems so far away. God, 1990 away. I know. Uh, we were probably in like second grade, maybe. We were... Yeah, we would have been in like second grade. I had my Princess of Power lunchbox, cold outside, waiting to go into school. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe had maybe had a um, few of my ponies in there, <laughs> just waiting to go in. It was a Friday night. I couldn't wait to get home and watch TGIF. Looking looking forward to a wild night. And do you want to hear this wild night? Yes. Tell me about this wild night. Wild wild night. All right. Well, if you listen to last week's episode, uh, Family Matters, which was literally like two weeks before this, <laughs> so it's only been two weeks, <laughs> maybe three weeks. It's a week. Okay, we are actually like, I didn't even know that. I just like randomly picked an episode. <laughs> so we're, we pretty much get the same lineup. So we're going to go through it very quickly. Uh, okay. In case you don't know, uh, things kicked off on ABC, the alphabet uh, with Full House. Do you know the episode No More Mr. Dumb Guy? No, not off the top of my head. All right, I'm going to look it up real quick. It sounds like it's a Joey episode, though. Uh, Joey or maybe like a dumb Jesse episode. Um, all right. Yeah. All right, here we go. I I was right. <laughs> and uh, oh, it's a Jesse one. Yeah, there's a pick. If you if you go to if you Google it on the right hand side, you, you know sometimes a pick will come up with it that shows the, mm-hmm. the company the uh, episode description. There's a pic- picture of Jesse wearing a black T-shirt with a brown vest over it, and he has his hands on his forehead like he's depressed, like something horrible just happened to him. Mm-hmm. And are you ready for the summary? Give it to me. Jesse takes drastic measures when he feels too dumb to attend a cultural arts party with Rebecca. Oh, that's oh, I I remember that oh, one. So I can I can only imagine the the struggle of Jesse. Yes, I feel like there's one of those scenes where Jesse's wearing glasses all of a sudden, oh. and he takes them off and he chews on them. Like, oh yeah. Oh yes, darling. He's trying to pay a studious, <laughs> like he's a collegiate yeah. <laughs> which is funny because it's still like a few seasons before we learned that jesse didn't graduate high school yeah and um i mean was becky brainy like i didn't really see like i know she was like a news reporter but she just reads cue cards girl just reads cue cards like what what is... like i felt like she wasn't like i never thought of her as the arty type a brainiac like she wasn't no. someone like that she wasn't like a stuck up snotty no she was a farm girl from freaking Nebraska. Yeah, like you just gotta be TV. You just gotta look good on the on Good Morning San Francisco. Wake up San Francisco, whatever it is the hell yeah. that she did. <gasps> wake yeah. up San Francisco. And just I don't know, just read the cue cards, read the teleprompter. Mm-hmm. I don't, and it's like, what what are, what are these deal what are with these Danny art things she's going to? What what is she going to? <laughs> it was probably something she had to do like a puff piece on for the Wake Up San Francisco. And who who are these girlfriends? Who who is, are these girlfriends? I've never the seen. The only time we ever saw Becky have like female friends was when she was pregnant and they did like the Lamaze class at the house. Oh, yeah, or like a baby shower or something. <laughs> all their gal pals came over. No, it was Lamaze class because the women all got hungry and they all had different cravings oh. and Jesse got scared. Oh, I I don't blame him. <laughs> all right. Are you ready for what was on after Full House? Yes, of course. Do you have any guesses? <laughs> Do you have any wild guesses? Wild guess, Family Matters. Yeah, Family Matters. Um, and then following Family Matters, what do you think it was on? Perfect Strangers. Hell yeah. And then uh, t- 
TJF ended with just the 10 of us, which um, we're trying to talk this into existence. We're trying to get this um, back on. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe. maybe I need some just the 10 of us. Like there's only like two or three seasons. We could binge watch that in like a weekend. No problem. Uh, <laughs> I watched most of Cougar Town in two days, so I could definitely get through just the 10 of us very quickly. And I, yeah. I think like Amazon Prime, I think we would be know a that I will watch like a full season of a sitcom that from Netflix in a day. Yeah. It's not a big one. I don't think I don't think a lot of people are clamoring for just the 10 of us. I don't think it really hit the uh, the syndication circuit. I don't really ever remember seeing it around a lot. It um would get played on USA a lot. Yeah. In reruns. So I can see like Amazon. But Prime you know what? We also, it. if you think about it. Growing Pains is pretty hard to find, too, for the most part. Yeah, but I mean, it, it hits, um, not, uh, not Meat TV. What's that other one that was um, playing? Ion? Uh, Antenna? Antenna, yeah. Like, they ha it hit that circuit over the summer, because I remember you went through it, and you watched the Night of the Iguana episode or something. No, I didn't. Oh, I thought you did. We talked about the episode. Well, we talked about it. I don't know why, but we talked about it. I more. forget why we talked about it, but we talked about it. All right, 2020 was on a 10, um, just... Hugh Downs, Barbara Walters, maybe John Stossel was on around this time. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Like, did, is he still on it? I haven't seen him. Or, I know he's like, oh, he, is he on Fox News now? John's, yeah, John Stossel is now on Fox News. He's like the enemy. People don't like him. <laughs> he's interesting to watch because I, I, I follow him on Twitter. I always liked him on 2020, though. Yeah, I liked him on 2020. <laughs> Are you ready for CBS? It's going to be mixed up a little bit. Okay, what's on CBS? All right, so things start off with a show that I never heard of. I even had to look this up, and I'm still a little confused. Have you ever heard of a show called Max Monroe, Loose Cannon? No, what the hell? All right. It ran for one season on CBS. It centered around a LAPD okay. detective with unconventional methods who always manages to, in quotes, get his man. Oh, because I haven't heard that description about 14 million times in my lifetime. And it sounds like something else that was on later on on NBC that's going to be on tonight, too. So this is just... A, maybe this was like a new genre in 1990-ish? Maybe, probably, but we're just so jaded because it's like, oh, okay. I don't even, the actors who are in it, Shadow Stevens, he's like, the, he was Max Monroe. I don't even, I've never even heard that name before. That sounds like a soap opera character. Shadow Stevens. Oh, oh, this guy sounds, ex all right, so he, he currently is on an internationally syndicated radio show called Mental Radio. It's an entertaining approach to UFOs and paranormal topics. So this is currently on the air. And he also okay. co-founded Sammy Hagar's rock station, Cabo Wabo Radio. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Which I've never heard of either. Oh, oh my God. We know this guy. We know this guy? He, uh, as, no, uh, as of July 2015, he is the, um, the announcer on Antenna TV. So like you hear him doing all the voiceover. Oh, okay. So uh, Shadow Stevens, uh, shout out to him. He, his acting career kind of fizzled out, but I don't know. Girl is all over the place. It's a guy. I'm a girl is all over the place. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, dude, don't misgender people. No, they don't I'm like sorry. that. I'm sorry. Um, if I offended anybody, uh, tweet me at Patrick. I'm done, and just give me a thumbs down, and I'll probably just block you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, why the fuck are you sending me a thumbs down? <laughs> are you ready for a two hour primetime soap block? Ooh! You know I am. So we get back to back Dallas and Falcon Crest, kind of two similar type mm -hmm. shows involving oil yes. and wine. <laughs> my two of my favorite things. <laughs> you ready for NBC? Yeah, it was on NBC. All right, we're gonna go through this quick. Baywatch, the NBC years was on tonight. Pre Pamela Anderson, I think. Um, Billy Warlock season probably. Yeah, the Billy Warlock um, season. Pre Nicole Eggert. Who was who was the girls on season one? I don't even remember. Um. I don't think I've ever even seen a season one, to be honest with you. Hold on. Like, it's so different. Wasn't there, like, a little kid on it, too? There was, like, the um, David Hasselhoff's son or something. Yeah, like, the first season is so different than, like, the later seasons. Yeah, whenever whenever they... It, it never really hit the syndication circuit. Like, these episodes... But they just... did, but, like, there's not that many compared to, like, the rest. All right, there's a... Um... Erica Alaniac? Yes, okay, uh... I believe it's season Sean one. Sean Weatherly played Jill. She dies. I remember. Okay, I remember that. Oh, yeah. Hobie. Brandon Call, the kid who, the little boy from uh, Step by Step plays yeah. Hobie. I forgot about that. Okay. Wait, what? No. Hobie. Hobie. Mitch's son, Hobie, in the first season is played by Brandon Call, who's um, JT on Step by Step. Oh, so then he gets recast. Yeah. They, they, they find like a hotter actor. It's um Jeremy. Is it Jeremy Jordan? 
Something like that. I'm trying to find his name and I'm not seeing Oh, want to hear something wild? Jason Moma was on Baywatch. Who was? Hey, um, apparently Kat needs to go <laughs> and look up some old some Baywatch episodes. I All right. Hot scoop. I will say. Baywatch kind of holds up. <laughs> Ooh, wait, isn't Pop TV playing it? Uh, it was, but I don't have Pop TV anymore. So, cause I before. Oh, Jeremy Jackson is the name of the guy who re- who was um Hobie. Oh, I knew it was Jeremy. So, did I? What did I say? Jeremy Jordan? Is that a name? Wasn't he a singer? Yeah, Jeremy. Okay, there's like he... two Jeremy Jordans that are singers. There's like the '90s one that's like super cheesy, and then there's like one now who's also kind of cheesy. The super cheesy one from the '90s was on the Beverly Hills 90210 soundtrack, like the original one. Yes, <laughs> that's why I know him. That's that's the only song I know him from. All right. Do you want to hear season one finale of Baywatch? you want to hear the episode description? Okay. All right. The episode is called The End and with a question mark. It aired on April 6, 1990. I'm guessing this ended early because they they're like, get this fucking show off the air. All right. An earthquake shakes Baywatch headquarters and causes many problems for the lifeguards. And for one, a life-altering decision is made. So I think that's Jill, and I think she dies. That probably makes sense. So uh, Jill didn't Jill didn't survive, and they sacrificed her to the um, beach gods, and in her place rose Pamela Anderson. Yeah. And I don't know, <clears throat> Donna Dierico and Yasmin Bleeth and a million other Nicole Eggert. Yeah. So shout out shout out to season two and on Baywatch and Baywatch Nights starring Eddie Cibrian. Yeah, like I'm looking this up, and there's like so many people. Like Brooke Burns was on this show. Yeah. Oh no, Eric. Erica Laniac was not Jill. She was Shawnee McLean. No, Erica, uh, Jill was played by Sean Weatherly. She hasn't come up in my list. Okay, Sean Weatherly was, um, she was a former Miss USA, and she was also in one of the Police Academy movies. Not the first, like, when they started getting, when they went from bad to really bad. Okay. <laughs> I th- Oh, Police Academy 3, Back in Training, which actually, that's a good one. That's, that actually is not a bad one. I'm yeah, that's a good one. Right like, the second one's kind of eh, but the third one's like, yeah, baby. And the one, they, the one they go you're... to Miami is, the one they go to Miami is pretty good, too, I think. Yeah. Mission it's, Miami, after I think they it's... go to Miami, when they, like, go to Russia, that's where it, everything gets lost. Yeah. Mission to Moscow, I think, is... And we apparently know one. way too much about Police Academy movies. Well, all I did in the 90s was watch Police Academy and the cartoon. It's like, I was obsessed with Police Academy. <laughs> Oh my god, he has the cartoon. I had the toys. They made toys. No, but like legit. <laughs> like I rewatched Police Academy a few months ago and I was like, I sat there going, why was I allowed to watch this as a child? Oh my god. <laughs> uh, the f- the first the first Police Academy, very problematic. Very homophobic jokes. Um, borderline racist jokes. Yeah. Are you ready for what was following Baywatch? Yeah, what's on after Baywatch? All right, we talked about this uh, last week. It stars Ali Walker and Grant Show, a short-lived series, um, a police-type drama called True Blue, and not the Madonna album. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe inspired by the Madonna album? Who knows? Maybe, like, Papa Don't Preach was, like, the theme song? Who knows? Oh, oh, hold on. I meant to bring this up when we were talking about Max Monroe, Loose Cannon. Okay. We got a flashback for a minute. All right. The band Yellow did the um, the theme song. Do you know the band Yellow? No. The oh yeah song from from uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. From what? You know the oh yeah from Ferris Bueller's oh, Day Off. Oh okay yeah. <laughs> so I just had to throw that out there. But um but True Blue yeah that was on at nine. It was only on for this one season. You know uh, Grant Show went on to do Melrose Place. Ali Walker went on to do The yeah. Profiler and Ghosted on Fox. And I don't know other weird stuff. Who knows? Following True yeah. Blue was Man Cuse. Oh Darnell Williams was on this show. <laughs> Who? Darnell, oh, Jesse from Angie and Jesse from All My Children, the one of the greatest super couples of all time. Okay, well, you heard it here first. <laughs> all right, are you ready to end off uh, end off the night? You guys should see the side eye he's getting right now. Yeah, what's what's on next? Mancuso, FBI. Very similar to uh, Max Monroe. <laughs> oh, wait, is this the guy? Is this the guy whose family thinks he's in the mob, but he's really an FBI guy? No, that was um, that was that was wise guy. Oh. This was kind of this was kind of similar to uh, Max Monroe. It was just an FBI agent with like unconventional methods, but he always gets the job done. Mm-hmm. And his higher ups kind of think, you know, they don't they don't like him for some reason. Oh, he's like an old dude. Yeah, Robert Lagier, I think. Play. We talked about it last week and very very yeah. in depth, and we were like amazed. So listen to the Family Matters episode if you want to hear us talk about Mancuso FBI. But uh, hold on, I want to bring up one thing. There was something on in syndication. 
for some reason it shows up in the uh it shows up in the in the listens I have. Oh my gosh. What is it? What is it? At 11:30 a.m., you could have watched 227, a re- probably a rerun of 227. <laughs> that is awesome. And I just had to bring that up because we love 227 and we're just we're trying to find a good episode. We're trying to find an episode yeah. to do. Yeah. <laughs> For real. We'll, we'll get there. Maybe before before the summer, we'll definitely do an episode of 227. Okay. So that's that's that night of television, if you want to get the landscape. Everything was new, according to this. Listen, brand new. So this yeah. is probably fresh after Christmas. Shows are coming back. Yeah. Um, they're back in our lives. It's going to be a long winter. It's not even Groundhog Day yet. Punks of Tony Phil hasn't even seen a shadow. <laughs> Ugh, the damn Groundhog. We're getting tired of playing Mario Brothers 3. And we just want to watch them. Cat just wants to play with all her Barbie dolls. Yeah. Well, I didn't play with Barbie. I played with a... You know what? I was... I'm in Ninja Turtle mania right now. This is a Ninja Turtle year for me. I'm probably playing with April O'Neil right now. I got that April O'Neil jumpsuit. I was probably wearing it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, like... Doing some hot reporting. Doing some hot scooping. Okay, so I sent Patrick a bunch of pictures of Barbie dolls from that this year era, era. And I had, like, a bunch of them that I was probably playing with at this point. Like, I sent you, like, ten pictures of Barbies. You finally sent me Barbie's friend Midge. I was like, oh, that's Midge? Midge was not what I expected. What did you expect Midge to be? I don't know. I, I just pictured, like, an old lady. <laughs> an old lady? Okay, to be fair, Midge was created in the 50s with Barbie. I was like, maybe maybe um, Barbie has, like, an, like a next-door neighbor that's elderly. <laughs> And they call her Midge. I don't know. You weren't expecting a cute little redhead. Yeah, and then like, I was also thinking like, I was like, maybe like a receptionist at Sterling Cooper. <laughs> I think like I think there was a Midge on Mad Men at one at one point. <laughs> oh my god, I have a Barbie and Midge in my collection that that they look like they work at Sterling Cooper. Ooh, we should uh, we should do a little like reenactment. Did you ever see yeah. the um? Someone did um. Me taking a few... them out of the box though. Someone a few years back did a. Um, they took their Barbie dolls and they dressed some of them as Mad Men characters. And the the mm-hmm. Joan one is really good. Whoever, however they like redid Joan, they nailed it. They they nailed her little caboose, her her bosoms, her red dress. It was great. I have to find. I'll, yeah. I'll put it on Twitter. I've seen it because I'm actually looking at pictures. Yeah. So shout out to right me. now. I wonder who they used. Maybe they used Midge. <laughs> Maybe they dyed her hair and gave her a good dye job. Um. No, actually, it just looks like. They use classic Barbies. Is there a ginger? A ginger um, Barbie? And then they repainted some of them. Well, shall we get into Because They're Cousins, the hot episode of Perfect Strangers? Because They're Cousins. Right. Be- before we get into the episode. So, okay. I'm. Go on. You go first. I said I picked this episode because of the picture on Hulu when you're scrolling through on your, app, on your mobile app. I was like, ooh, Okay. That's exactly why I picked it. I had no reason to pick it. There wasn't like any. What was the? Except for the picture. The picture was like, ooh. What was the pic? Because I don't think I noticed it. The picture was um, Balky and his cousin. What's his cousin's name? I've already forgotten. Bartolo. What was it? Oh, Bart. They call him Bart, Bartolo. right? Bartolo. Yeah, and yeah. he's Bart. Like, we're probably like post Simpson mania. So the name Bart just like is loving and everyone wants to be a Bart. So. Um, mm-hmm. This ep- this episode is totally a modern day, at least in 19- a 1990 take on, not Donna Reed show, what is it, um, Patty Duke show. The Patty Duke show. Yes. I'm because they're Reed. cousins. Yes. Identical cousins. And and Balky sings the theme song in the episode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I love, all right, so we'll get to the premise uh, very quickly. I think you should, um, you should introduce the show and then we'll kind of get into the. Um, okay. So. The comparisons to Patty Duke is um, a show where you have uh, Larry Appleton, who is this guy who grew up in a huge family, and he moved from he moved from Wisconsin to Chicago, and he was super excited because he was going to get to live alone for the first time. And if you've lived with a lot of people your whole life, the idea of living alone is, like, super exciting. Yeah, he's, he's kind of like know? Mary Tyler Moore in it. He's just, he's just yeah. breaking away from his comfort zone, going to a brand new city. He's going to have some wild adventures. He's going to be a bachelor. Yeah. Um, I don't mean, he might go to Wrigley Field and ride the, um, is it the L, the L train? <laughs> yeah, it's the L train. <laughs> I only know that because of the Lance M- Bass movie on the line. Go to the, uh, maybe go to the Marywood Children Fountain, go to the Bean, the Mirror Bean thing. Was that there? I have no idea. I've never been to Chicago, so. 
Um, but yeah, like Larry is like this young guy who's graduated college. He's moving out on his own and he gets a place in Chicago. And then this weird guy shows up like, Larry, I'm your cousin from Meeples. I'm Belky. And it's like, I've come to live with you. And Larry's like, excuse me, bitch, what? So how long, how long was Larry in Chicago before um, Belky showed up? I don't think he was there very long at all. Like he, he was still unpacking or he just, he got everything unpacked and he just threw his feet on the couch and the doorbell rang. I, I feel like he, it was a, he just got unpacked kind of thing. Like he maybe had been there a couple weeks. <laughs> he just plugged in his Nintendo. Like he's there, there. Like it's not even like he doesn't even have a Nintendo because it's 1986 when he li- moves there. Uh, he had a he had a, um an Atari. Yeah. <laughs> or a Coleco Vision. He had the Commando or whatever it's called. How how old is Cousin Larry? Because I get the impression that he's like near and forty. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's actually. This is one of those things where. Everybody looked older in the 80s. I, but he looks sig- like significantly older than Belky, though. Like, Belky, you could tell me he was 26, and I'd, I'd say, okay, I, I see it. Mm-hmm. But Cousin Larry, I just look at him like, why does he look like he's like in his 40s? Because it's the 1980s. That's why. Just think of how old the parents looked on Charles in Charge the first season. How old is, what's his name, Marklin Baker? He is 63 now. So he was... He was born in, he was born in 1954, so... When yeah. when did the show start in 1984? So 1986. He was, he was so he was like in real life the actor was like 30. So you figure Larry is like late 20s. Which but he is playing younger, um, early 30s. Yeah, I could see. I mean, he already had a he already was like in the middle of his career, it seemed like. At least in this episode, like it seemed like he was The first season they worked at like um the antique store on the first floor of their building. Oh, yeah, yeah. Then they they retooled the show, and then he he's like all of a sudden he's like um yeah. like a journalist or something. He got his foot in the door. <laughs> Belky shows up, and uh, like Larry just accepts him. He's just like, okay, I guess you're my cousin. I guess you're gonna live here. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> if some weird guy from another country shows up and is like, hey, I'm your cousin. I'm gonna move in. Is with it you. established like how they're related? Is it ever? I don't even think I know to be honest with you. I honestly don't know. Like, it's like there's weird like on his father's side. Like their cousins, like distant cousins. Like, was there like a like a short marriage maybe somewhere, and Belky was the product of that somewhere and, somehow? Or is it just like um, cousin Larry just has so many family members? He's just like, oh, you know what? You're probably like so and so's second cousin or yeah, something. Yeah, it's probably like there's just so many damn family members. It's like okay, yeah, like that family tree just kept on going. And he just couldn't he couldn't find the root. <laughs> like we're related somehow. I'm just gonna accept you because. My parents said I had to. So the first like season is them just they're polar opposites of each other. Belky's very he like is very like traditional. Like he likes family traditions. He likes he brings the Meepos lifestyle to Chicago mm. to the U.S. and he holds on to these values. And he is just yeah. We're in what season five, and he's still kind of like harping about like you would assume that he's only been in Chicago for like two weeks if if you watch this episode for the first time. Like, this was your first episode of Perfect Strangers ever. Balky wants to be an American, wants to live the American dream, but he's also, <clears throat> excuse me, not going to forget where he came from for the most part. He's not going to purposely change who he is. But it's it's been five years, and you would have think that he, they he would have had some kind of, like, so. acclimate, acclimation to it. Like, all right, he's fully, firmly rooted in the U.S. now. But no, it's like they're still weird. Well, to be fair, he's also at this point, he thinks his cousin, his other cousin, Bart, who's only been in America a few months, is going to need to feel like Mipos. Yeah. He's going to need that homely home feeling. So he goes overboard, making the apartment very Mipos like. So, all right. So cousin Bart, Bartolo, Bartlo, whatever the hell his name was. Bart. We'll just call him Bart. All right. Bart. So. We'll just call him Bart because that's what he wanted to be called. So he moved from Mipos to Los Angeles about six months ish prior to coming to Chicago. So yeah. I, he's been in the U.S. for a little while. L.A. is probably like the strangest place you could ever land if you're going to the United States for the first time ever, especially if you live in Mipos, which is I, I gather like <clears throat> the only thing that's there is, are trees, grass, and sheep. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like what else is like? Do they have a Seven Eleven there? Like what? Do they have anything? No. Like it, it seems like Mipos is like. 200 years behind everywhere else in the yeah, world. Yeah, like, Mipos is just this little country where 
<laughs> like shocking that Balky even knows like the American catchphrases he picks up. Yeah, you know, like every now and then you just see like a plane flies over the Amazon and takes a rare shot of like people who have never left the woods and they've never seen anything mm-hmm. modern at all. Like that's what I just yeah. picture Mebus is. It's like it's like an invisible like there's like a, a dome over the I picture um it's like Wakanda from um, the Marvel universe, like where the Black Panther lives. <laughs> like you can't no one knows about it. No one knows it's there. It's just its own little world. <laughs> is it real? Nobody. Yeah, there's like a dome over it. It's like a secret entrance. What you gotta like, you gotta find it. It's like yeah. in a mountain. You can't, you can't just go there. So that's that's me post. Somehow, I don't know. Belky ends up here in the U.S. and he finds out his cousin Bart's coming, and so he's expecting this guy. He's like, oh my god, I've been in the U.S. for five years. Um, cousin Bart, he's only been here for six months. He's gonna need. I'm gonna need to mm-hmm. hold his hand. I'm gonna need to guide him. It's gonna be wild. It's gonna be very tough for him. He's coming to Chicago for a little while. And he shows up, and he is like... He's a smooth operator. Yeah, he's like a yuppie. He's like um, a wa- he like Wall Street, uh, maybe like Patrick Bateman from American Psycho. He's just in it. He's just in our world Only now. with like the California yeah. laid back attitude. Kind of. Uh, they kind of gave him like a, um, like a Keanu Reeves vibe, maybe? Like from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure-ish? Or like Cody from Step by Step. He had that, like, that surfer dude-ish kind of vibe. But he was like... Yeah, he had the, like, surfer dude, like, what's up, bro? He had the accent, but his style was more, more, like, business-like, though. Like, so it was weird. It was a weird mm-hmm. mishmash. <laughs> it's that, like, California professional laid-back thing, though. Like, he could have been, like, a, a um, like a Los Angeles banker, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> you can work in a bank, you can wear a suit and tie, but you still have that bro talk, like, that dude talk, surfer dude talk. Yeah, exactly. He, he was like he's hanging out with Dylan in the afternoon or in the morning he's surfing with Dylan and then he just mm-hmm. throws th- takes off his wetsuit and throws on his tie and I don't know processes loans he's hanging out with those studio executives yeah. later in so, the day he's he's now in he's now in the um, Chicago I guess he's gonna be living with Larry and Belky well he's come to visit he's gonna stay with them and of course he's got attitude He's like, oh, yeah, I can't sleep on the couch, bro, because, like, my back is bad. So I guess I'll just, like, stay in a hotel. And Balky's all like, oh, no, 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 no. I'll take the couch. You take my bed. You take my bed. Like, Balky's that family member who's going to bend over backwards and make everybody else feel better and get walked all over. Oh, my God, I'm Balky. Yes, you are Balky. Shout out to uh, Cat being Balky. <laughs> we'll call you Kalki. <laughs> Kalki? <laughs> I can't wait to see that hashtag. (laughs) All right. So while Bart was in Los Angeles, he got mixed up with, I guess, some con artists, like scam artists, like a. Yeah. He's definitely like hanging out with like the con artists. Kind of like pyramid schemers. He's hanging out with like Patrick Swayze and Keanu Reeves on the beach. You know, we should be surprised they didn't have him wear a dead president's mask. (laughs) Ooh. Shout out to Point Break. Yeah. Who, oh, who I'm gonna it, watch that. Oh. I know. I'm gonna watch that. I'll watch the real one, uh, not the remake. Fuck the. Remake. I know the the remake is like it's like snowboarding. I was like, what? No. Yeah. Point Break is about being in Hawaii and just like chasing the wave. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, all right. So, I'm guessing I'm guessing Bart was in Los Angeles and he was probably looking through like the classifieds, looking for a job, and he probably found one of those. You know those kind of those like. Some, every now and then you're on, like, like looking for a job on like Craigslist and you find like the the pyramid scheme like job like the the telemarketer yeah. thing and you get like roped into it and they just like they just take you and they take you in you probably yes. give them money and they brainwash you and they got a hold of Bart he was fresh off the boat from Mepos in Los Angeles he was starstruck he probably saw like Emmanuel Lewis and like Gary Coleman walking around was like excited. Yeah, he probably saw Corey and Corey hanging out. Oh yeah, he saw the Coreys. <laughs> that yeah, they were probably like a hot commodity around this time. Maybe even Nicole yeah. Eckert was around too. Yeah, she was um she was on the casting couch looking to get cast on Baywatch. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, I wasn't even realizing what I was. You saying gotta cut that out. Like, uh, so then they, they brainwash him and they they do that thing yeah. where. What what was the business that he was trying to get going? I can't even remember. I watched this last week. <laughs> it was a beach towel that is the same color as the sand. That was it. Okay. So 
He like, had this great idea. This is like the biggest. This is such a con. Like, oh my god! <laughs> Thank God, Larry, who is actually kind of a con con artist himself. He's always trying to like get rich quick. Is good enough that he's gonna like try and prevent Valky from so, getting scammed by his other cousin. So I guess all right. So Bart <laughs> meets up with this guy, some, and he, he makes beach towels that look like sand. So and then he needs an he needs an investor. Because that's totally what I want my beach towel to look like. Come on, people. Yeah. <laughs> so, Balky, I guess, has, like, a life savings that's, I guess, a decent amount of money. And it's locked up in the bank. And he, he I guess he, it's there for, I don't know, if anything ever happens to Cousin mm -hmm. Larry, Balky has, like, a fallback, I guess. And where did Balky get all this money? You know what? I don't think it's a lot of money, to be honest. It's, it's probably, like, 500 bucks or something. Yeah, it's probably just, like, a nice little cushion like but how much do you need to get like a beach towel started i don't know i mean you just need a prototype maybe and then i mean the fabric can't be that much money right no i mean how many do you need to make to get started like you probably just need to make like a couple hundred maybe yeah and just see how they sell and then if, if they're they do good i mean it can't take that long to get beach towels printed i can't imagine i mean it's... i guess it depends on like are they being printed are they being woven like what's the i'm guessing they're just regular towels that they're printing they're like screen printing them or something. Yeah. Like, however they i don't know you you worked in a screen printing shop how do you make towels <laughs> um i mean okay so you can get like a huge you can get like blank towels and you can get a screen to put this like design on Okay, just like a t-shirt kind of thing? Yeah, just like the same way you would a t-shirt, as long as it's um, a natural fiber. Okay, and you just you just have the picture of the beach, the sand that you want to use. You just get a, um, yeah. a 1990 JPEG file or something. I don't know what they used. Oh my god, yeah, what, would you, what did you use back then? A BMP. Well, Microsoft Paint was around. You probably had a yeah. BMP. What was it called? A bitmap? <laughs> yeah, but still, like, ooh. And then, so you just... Gotta get. How did people used to screen print? Like you had to like oh by hand like ooh. I mean I'm sure like a screen printing machine was just, just probably not as high tech as it is now, but it's probably it's there. I mean yeah. it's, you probably just had to like there was something yeah because we were having shirts people had t-shirts with logos. Yeah, you probably just had to have the file and it was just on a diskette, <laughs> like a three by five disc yeah. floppy disk. You popped it in. You popped it in the machine, and then it printed out the, the sand. It was probably just like a very small file and just printed out. I mean, yeah, it's like you don't need a lot of them. You just need to make enough just to sell a few and, I don't know, mark up the price a little bit, make your monies back, and you're good. But I don't know. He mm -hmm. Bart needed, like, startup money, I guess. Maybe he had to buy a, a screen printer. Well, here's the thing is he also basically was just trying to con Balky out of money. He was going to go back to L.A., right? Was that his whole... Originally, yes. And then he's like, oh, I'm going to stay in Chicago because I think he thought that um, Balky was an easy mark. Oh, yeah, but like, if he takes all Balky's money, then Balky has no more money to give him. Like, why would you stay in Chicago? Because he's an idiot. And then like, and then, then he tried, like, moving in on um, Jennifer and Marianne. Yeah, he hit on both Jennifer, both Marianne and Jennifer. And Marianne's kind of ditzy, and she's just like, eh, no. <laughs> Low-key. This sounds like you're hitting on me. I'm going to go walk over here. Like, and he doesn't know that Marianne and Balky are, like, a thing. Low-key, I can't tell the difference between Jennifer and Marianne. <laughs> Marianne's the short one. She's definitely ditzy. I'd, I'd probably have to watch a few more episodes and I can figure it out. But watching this one... Yeah, you have to, like, you. Did, we didn't see them very much in this episode. Jennifer's the taller one, and she's more intelligent. The only reason I figured it out was just because then they had, like, a weird pair-off scene where, you know, they each go to their respective partners, I guess. Well, you know, Bart had to see that Larry landed this hottie that is Jennifer. And yeah. I asked this on my Twitter <laughs> earlier. Who, like, which is more unbelievable? Leonard... Getting Penny on the Big Bang Theory, or Larry getting Jennifer on Perfect Strangers. What is more believable? Which one's like, yeah, which one's more believable? You get like. I'm gonna say Penny going to um, Lenny because he's a smart man. He, I don't know, he like rocket scientist basically. Um, probably makes decent money. Larry, uh, I mean, yeah, I don't think Larry's a catch. <laughs> just I, I just see him like he just lives in a shitty apartment. Nothing, nothing great. He lives with his yeah. weird cousin. Um, I'm, I don't know. He, he had to like escape his family, so I'm sure there's something like some, there's some like skeletons in that closet. Well, let's be real. He was like um, how old and still living with his parents before he finally moved out on his own. We figured late twenties. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, I will say this though, like um, the 
Larry and Balky's apartment is what I, like, thought apartments looked like. Like, I thought this was the floor plan for, like, all apartments for, like, the longest time. Like, before I'd ever actually been in an apartment. You had never seen an apartment before. And then you actually probably saw a tiny-ass apartment. You're like, this is an apartment? Like, where where are you going to put that long-ass couch and all the room to dan- do the Dance of Joy? Yeah. Where do you do the Dance of Joy? You're like, you need to do the Dance of Joy outside because we don't want to wake the people downstairs yeah. up. They're sleeping. They're, they're early sleepers. <laughs> but yeah, I'm always, like, sad that, like, none of my apartments have the layout of the Perfect Strangers apartment. Uh, I'm trying to think of if I've ever seen, before Perfect Strangers, if I've ever seen an apartment on a TV show um, before. Um, well, Honey oh, Mother's- um, I mean, Mary Tyler Moore was kind of an apartment-ish. Yeah, Mary Tyler Moore. Um, did Thelma, uh, not Thelma, <laughs> Laverne and Shirley live in an apartment? Yes, they lived in an, a, they lived in, um, apartments in both Wisconsin and LA. But you know what, Loki, I think I saw Perfect Strangers before I ever saw Laverne and Shirley. Though. Yeah, same. <laughs> like, I think, like, I was a little bit At older. At least like, consciously. Yeah. Purposely. Like, we consciously watch Perfect Strangers before we watch Laverne and Shirley. I, th- I want to say I was much older when I started watching Laverne and Shirley. I remember Jesse and Becky had yeah. an, very briefly had an apartment on Full House, and I think it was small. Yeah, it was like for an episode before they moved yeah, into episode. the attic. Then they had to move, yeah. <laughs> but for some reason, it seemed like it was like a big deal. Like, I, it felt like they were out of the out of the Full House house for a long mm-hmm. time. It was like a commercial break, but it seemed like a long time. Yeah, but now they're all moving back in. <laughs> so Cousin Larry is on to Bart. Mm-hmm. He's, and he's trying to get it into Belky's head that he's being being played. But Belky won't yeah. see it. He's like, family first. He's like, I have to support my cousin Bart. My cousin Bart was there for me back in my days in Mipos. We pretty much look the same. Which they don't think they look anything alike. I do love the early like green screen effect of having the actors on the screen together and you can see it kind of you can kind yes. of see it you can yeah you can kind of see it you can tell when there's the, the double stand-ins in there the stand in yeah because they they'll always show one person from behind the other person's facing the camera mm-hmm. and then they do the quick cut and they switch the camera so you know they had to stop yeah reposition it, it's great i love it and then they have them like standing next to each other and it's total green screen i love that effect and like, um, there's always just like this weird difference in the lighting for one of them. The coloring is a little different, like wherever, whoever yeah. is the, the new person on this, the page, I guess. <laughs> I forget, like, yeah. what is, is it Bronson Pinshaw? Pinshaw? How do you say his name? Bronson Pinshaw, yeah. How do right. you, how does he sound? Like, what is his real voice? <laughs> I think his real voice is more Bart. Because I, have you ever seen the but movie? still not, like, as exaggerated. I remember he was in um, the Langoliers, that, like, made for TV movie, Stephen King movie, that mm-hmm. was on, like, 94-ish. Yeah. And that was the first time I ever heard his real voice, and I was so confused. Mm-hmm. I was so confused. Like he just talked normal, and I was like, "What? What is going? What is wrong with him? Like, is he sick?" Yeah, it's like when you hear his real voice, you're like, "Whoa!" And then, I mean, even on Step by Step, he was like a way over the top character. Yeah. Oh my god, I forgot he was on Step by Step. <laughs> he was Suzanne oh, Summers, like god. Um, business partner. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I forgot all, right. all about that until that. So, oh, thank you, Patrick. Wow. Well, I'm in, I'm in step by step rewatch right now, and I have to say, I kind of enjoy it. <laughs> I I love how they went for the Brady Bunch effect, but they all hate each other. So how does this end? How does this madness? Okay, so um, they have a party, and it's one of those totally like TV parties where they have the punch bowl and the platters of food out. <coughs> And everybody's just hanging around their apartment. Like, it doesn't seem like a very exciting party. It's just all extras that are there. It's it's Jennifer, Marianne, Larry, Bart, Belky. Yeah. And then maybe people that they work with, but it's just, they don't interact with anyone like else. Like, Lydia from work is there. Okay. Um, What's his face? Bernard from Lost. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, that was Bernard from Lost. I did not, I was trying to figure yes, out who it that was. was but... I could not, I cannot remember what his character name on... Perfect Strangers was, but Bernard from Lost. Uh, but they do that thing that they do whenever they have TV show parties is they don't interact with anyone that's like not has that's never not like if someone's never been on the show before, they don't interact with mm-hmm. those people. They're just there. There was an extra. So it's like why does <laughs> there was an extra who I don't think they knew what the hell was going on. They just found him on the street. Yeah, they just like found him on the street and like threw him in like 
because there comes the point where Balky and Bart make the announcement that they're going to be business partners. And he's the only one who's like, yeah, woohoo, way to go. And everybody else is just like cringing. Like, I like how that's like an announcement no. that they have. Like, all right, I have an announcement. My cousin and I are business partners yeah. now. Like that you have a party to announce that. To announce like a beach towel business. That is never going to happen. It's not like they're like launching a bank or like some brave new like tech company or something. It's it's they're making a beach towel that looks like sand. <laughs> and then Larry finally has like the balls to be like, hey, why would you make a beach towel that looks like sand? Like you're gonna put it down on the ground and you're never gonna find it. <laughs> Even Lydia was like, um, how would you find your towel? Uh don't you need to be able to find it when you come back from Swimming Lake? Why are we not thinking about these things? Low-key, what I thought is you would just put your chair on top of it. <laughs> I was just like, you put your beach chair on top of it or something. Or like your bag or something. Some other item. But then it's just yeah. like, why not just get like a hot pink one? Yeah, like, let me just get like the cute towel with the zebra print and the neon colors and we're good to go. I still think you'd be able to find it, though. Like... I'm sure it doesn't look exactly like sand. It's probably because probably, the colors are not a perfect match. No. There's there's just no and then, way. Like, you, sometimes you have the you have the white sand, then you have the more like the wet sand, and there's just different sand colors. Mm -hmm. it, you're you're gonna see it. Like I don't know. It was yeah. just it, it's a dumb joke for. It was just like a stupid premise. It's just like a con. It's that's all this is is just a con. But Larry is diligent. Larry finally gets it through to Balky that he's being played. But Balky he does bring yeah. his checkbook with him though, and Larry's like, oh god, like. Don't do this. And then Balky's like, wait, hold on. Hear me out. Hear me out, Cousin Larry. Bart, Cousin Bart, <laughs> I'll give you the money. But this is not for your business. This is for you mm -hmm. to to get yourself on your feet. I know you're out here. You're probably struggling. So you, you had to think you have to come here and swindle me. But no, I'm like, you know what? We're both from Epos. We, we're, we're from the same cloth, so to say. And I know what it's like to come from a strange new world to come to America. And we're family and we're supposed to help each mm -hmm. other. And, you know, family before anything else. So I'm going to give you money just to get you started out here. And... No, it's to send, it's to go back to meet both. Oh, is it to go back? He's going back? Yeah, because... Um, I must have fallen asleep. He says, <laughs> I'm giving you this money. Um, this is not the place. It's basically between Larry and Balky, they make Bart see that the U.S. is not the place for him to be because he's kind of a con artist. <laughs> I mean, he could change. And um, Larry has, like, Larry, like, did his research, and he contacted the guy who's actually behind the beach towels and found out that Bart has, like, no rights to these at all. Oh, oh, that's right. What? I must so, have, like, went and, like, grabbed, like, a snack or something, because I just, like, all this stuff is flooding back to me. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. Yes. Um. So, <laughs> um, Balky is like, I will give you money to go back to Meepos, and you can figure out, you know, you need to get back to your roots because you've lost who you are. So is it just like a plane ticket? Like what what do you have to give him to go back to Mifo? Yeah, it's just like money for a plane ticket. It seemed like he was giving him more more than just money for a plane ticket though. It just seemed like he was No. I don't know. It was just the way Balky was talking. I mean, okay, let's see. How much do, it's probably like not a direct flight to Meepos. You probably got to go to like four places, take a goat, who knows yeah. what else. You got to like get on a train. You got to go to plane, train, automobile, goat. I don't know, a magic carpet. Yeah. Um, I don't know, like an underground tunnel. Like, it is probably um, easier to get to Olivia de Havilland's... Um, Swiss chalet. Swiss chateau chalet or whatever than it is to get to yeah. Meepos. Project. <laughs> Here we go. We'll have a race. We'll have... Well, you'll you'll go to... Um, you'll go to Meepos and I'll go to um, Olivia de Havilland's Swiss chalet. And we'll see who gets there first. <laughs> no, no. You go to Meepos. I don't want to go to Meepos. I go to Olivia de Havilland. I don't want to go to Meepos either. I want to go meet Melly from Gone with the Wind. All right. Well, I'll let you go. All right. You fine, fine. But you're letting me come over after. <laughs> so okay. Find Meepos. We'll see. I'm I'm heading to Olivia de Havilland, Swiss Chalet. But it it might be like another hundred years before I get there. So I don't know. Olivia yeah. de Havilland, we saw her two hundred and first by that point. Yeah. And let's be real, she'll still be alive. All right. I have some. <laughs> Hot scoop on perfect. This is not really a hot scoop, but okay. Have you ever seen a show called The Leftovers? No, but I've heard the title. All right, so this was a show on HBO. It was created by, I think it was Damon Lindelof who did Lost. Mm -hmm. I think it was on for like three seasons on HBO. It's basically like a left behind, like Kirk Cameron's left behind scenario. It's just there was some kind of rapture. All these people just disappeared, and there's all these people that are just stuck on Earth. And in one episode. They reveal that the entire cast of Perfect Strangers were part of the rapture, except for Marklin Baker. 
And they actually got Marklin Baker to be in the show. Like, he actually was in an episode. Seriously? He was left behind. So, I don't know. I might I might have to watch it, though, just based on um, just based on this fun fact. Just based on the scoop. <laughs> this hot well, scoop. I think I just found the TV movie Marklin Baker did in 1988 called I Going to the Chapel. I know he did a lot of TV movies. I remember seeing him a lot yeah. in back in the day. God, I miss TV movies like this. Like these fun little like drop in adventures to these lives. Like my boyfriend's back. Yeah, like tonight, go into the chapel starring perfect strangers, Mark Lynn Baker. Dance till dawn. Yeah, like um Bronson Pinch like I said he was in the Langoliers. Yeah, like oh so. there was like a TV movie series called that um Rue McClanahan was in. Oh. Like the first one, she got married to Patrick Duffy. It was like Children of the Bride. And then there was another one where she was pregnant Ooh. called Baby of the Bride. And like the story of her and the kids from her first marriage who were all grown up. And um, Christy McNichols was in it. And some other people who like you would recognize if you saw, but it was like the 80s. So <laughs> I can't remember their names. And like I think there's even like third movie. All right. So you remember how I told you this. So Rue McClanahan was on like a few, like maybe the first few seasons of uh, Mama's Family. Yeah. I told you I saw an episode Betty White was on it. So it was Rue McClanahan and Betty White on the yes. same episode of Mama's Family. It was a wild episode. Mm-hmm. Oh, did I tell you about the Golden Girls t-shirt I saw the other day? No. No, it was I was at Target. And um, it said, Happy Valentine's Day. Here's a dozen roses. And then like a dozen pictures of Betty White. I was so mad they didn't have it in my size. I still would have bought, bought it and just like hanging up on my wall or something. But I did right. get another Golden Girls t-shirt, so I'm okay. Any uh, any last minute thoughts on Perf Strange? Um, Perfect Strangers is a fun little show. I kind of just want to go and rewatch a bunch of it. Yeah, it's on Hulu. Avail- all episodes are available on Hulu. Yes. Very very easy watch. Very quick. The the show goes by quick. I want to do the Dance of Joy. It has that um. It does go by really quick. We talk about like sometimes like the older sitcoms could go by really quick, and they get to the point. You don't mm-hmm. have a lot of like um, hang time. They don't really get into. A lot. They just get to the point. They're in. They're out. Mm-hmm. And you're like, the episode's over already. Yeah. You're like, what? What? Where, where, where did this twenty minutes go? They don't have like the storyline that runs throughout the season the way they do now. More like back then, they might have like a two part episode. Yeah, you get like a short arc of episodes, but um, they don't. I don't even think this episode doesn't even have like a B plot. It's just straight up the main story. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What are we doing next week? We're we're sticking with the TGIF uh, theme. Um, we're doing we're kind of going a little out there. We're kind of going to kind of venturing away from the traditionally type shows, and we're getting a little um fantastic. I think we are doing a Michael Jacobs show. Yes, it is a classic. It is also a Jim Henson production. I was gonna say I'm pretty sure it's Jim Henson show. It has some uh, Muppets in it. <laughs> yes, it is dinosaurs. Which I have not seen since I was in fifth grade, so I, I am curious. I have watched, like, a couple episodes here and there. Okay. Yeah. Does <laughs> I'm it hold so up? ready for the world of Not the Ma. Pre, pre, pre-show, does it hold up? It, um, it kind of does, yeah. Like, there's, like, it's got the very classic okay. sitcom situations. And I forgot, was it always a TJR show? Because I thought it was on, like, weeknights for some reason. I, re- no, I remember going into... it wasn't always a TJF show. Okay, because I was going to say, I remember, like, watching it and then going into school the very next day and, like... Yeah, so do I. ...saying not the mama to my class. <laughs> I remember, and, like, like... I definitely didn't, like, st- stick that all I wouldn't all do my math homework. I'd be like, I was... Wa- uh, my brother wanted to watch dinosaurs in my room, so I couldn't do my math homework. <laughs> I legit used that as an excuse to not do my math. Uh, that's, that's better than my dog ate it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, kid, kids today don't have that um, that magic power of saying that they couldn't watch, do their homework because they were watching dinosaurs. Jim, Jim Henson's dinosaurs. Yes. So we haven't, uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll figure out what episode we're going to do. We'll have to go through the library of eps. I don't know, maybe, we'll, ooh, I always liked the finale though, like the one where it's like they die. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's so morbid. I always like the finale because it's like they die. Oh my God, Patrick. Oh my God. God. Even the um the first episode's pretty morbid too because I guess they there's there's a tradition is when your um your grandparents reach a certain age you have to like throw them into the tar pits yes and they're like going to bring the grandmother to the tar pit but she like says a joke and they just decide to keep her for some reason it's like oh let's just keep her yeah. you know what she has wise things to say so I don't know, we'll figure out what episode we'll do um but definitely definitely um watch it on it's on Hulu so you can watch any episode you want and you can watch along with us so you can um you can gab about dinosaurs yes. 
And where can you follow us? Where can you follow our wacky adventures? Our wacky adventures are available at Very Podcast on Twitter, at A Very Special Podcast on Facebook and Instagram. Then, of course, you can follow us at saltyrockmedia.com, veryspecialpodcast.com. You can follow Patrick's random thoughts at Patrick M. Dunn, or you can follow my crazy love triangle soap opera adventures at Cat Deviant. I can't even keep up with your. I just, I have Yeah, to. like, dude, I don't even know, like, what's going on 90% of the time. Like, I'm like, I gotta watch a Tide Pod commercial, and then I'll come back to reading the rest of her, rest of her adventures. But definitely follow us, and I don't know. J- take that journey with us. And as always. Yeah, just join us in our wild world. You check us out on all our other shows, which they're, they yeah, just oh, keep yeah. coming. Uh, yeah, we should probably pimp out our other shows. Uh, Getting Catty with Cat and Pat. Yeah, we got Getting Catty. We are currently discussing the assassination of Gianni Versace. We will have a double episode coming after this coming soon. Maybe. Yeah, Duckball, a Big Brother podcast. Yes. Uh, we have Why No Two One Bros. Cat's not on it, but we'll sneak her in. We talk about Nine Two One O, and we just um, it's just Slumber Party coming soon, which is her like her little like girls' night. Yes, Slumber Party, which will come eventually. I know I've been talking about it forever, but I got to get the format right. And on, and on that note, as always. Bye. Watch the skies. This isn't the X Files, dude.